Oh, so I forgot to hit the record button. Uh, <laughs> all right, so as you can see, I'm in the middle of uh, a um, disassembly of this Keychron K4. Uh, this is the optical red version. Uh, code name is J1. Now the reason I'm doing this is because on the Facebook group, the official Keychron Keychron Facebook group, uh, there's a word saying that uh, the optical version of K4s have hot swappable sockets. And uh, there's no definitive proof for this property, so there's only one way to find out, and it's to uh, take this guy apart. Uh, definitely voiding the warranty on camera, which sounds like a fun thing to do. And uh, I'm almost done with the key, all the keycaps. So much work taking it out. Uh, imagine the problem, take, putting it back. And what is worse, I don't even remember the layout. All right. Ooh. Okay, so I imagine you don't have to take out everything, but at least you have to take out the top row, the third row. This then the bottom two rows just to make sure you're able to uh, expose all your screws. Um, I don't think we have I have to uh, do anything with the sides because these screw holes on the sides are not present with uh, the plastic version. So oh, I got the wrong screwdriver. All right, get it. Get a screwdriver, lay it flat, and uh, let's keep going. Okay, I think that's all the screws. Fifteen screws total. Right, so so as soon as I uh, flip it over, this uh, is, the plate is already trying to come out. So let's uh, slowly lift it off the housing and uh, see if there's any flux cable underneath that we have to remove. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. The, this PCB already came off. <laughs> Look, the PCB is underneath, and uh, and the plate just comes out with all the switches. Uh, I wonder what's holding this back. It shouldn't be. Uh, it's probably just held by friction. See, uh, we we'll just uh, do a little, give it a little wiggle. If you look, if you see the keyboard, it's uh, starting to get a little wet because I'm always sweating. <laughs> oh, all right, wonderful. Look, the whole thing came off, and uh, yeah, this comes off totally clean. And uh, wow, the stabilizers have uh, lubricants on it, so very interesting. So, this, this, uh, so the optical switches has um, just completely comes apart like this. Oh my god. Oh, check this out. So this is how it works. This 
the switch housing just as it pushes down, this plunger uh, kind of closed off this little opening here. And uh, on the keyboard, there are these little LEDs. Uh, this is labeled as IR and this is labeled PT. So what I think how it works is this, the uh, infrared beam activates on the right and it shoots across to be received on the left receiver and when you push the button push the key switch down it interrupts the beam and register the the key press okay so um, now if I really want to I think I can uh, flip this board up and uh, pick it up and see if we can uh, check out what's underneath but chances are there's not much going on because because that's just um, that's just your battery on the left and uh, some controller circuit on the right including this uh, this blue part is actually the Bluetooth module as you can see there's a uh, Bluetooth antenna right here uh, the circuit board name CK8875 RGB G1.2 uh, I don't know what that is uh, maybe uh, the Facebook boss can uh, tell us more uh, switches over here alright um, I don't know actually I don't know much about electronics in this level so I'm just gonna put it right back and uh, hopefully I still have a functioning keyboard Make sure the switch is lined up. <laughs> uh, the sliding switch is a line up on the left side. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay, so uh, with that said, hot swappable sockets. Um, that's not a hot swappable socket on the PCB. That would be my conclusion. But would these keys be swappable? Uh, due to the design of uh, be, uh, the plate being completely separate from the PCB, uh, I must say it is hot swappable. Um, what do you think? Uh, let's try uh, take out one of these guys. It may be hard because I don't have this special tool for it. So. Uh, the way you do take out switches is this uh, if you look at these uh, official like the to uh, tools that are specifically made to take out keys or uh, key switches you notice that uh, they grip on these two tabs one tab on the top one tab on the bottom so if you don't have the tool you could you would just have to simulate the same push and lift it. Let's see how this goes. Alright, I might need to uh, put this away a little bit. Yeah, my head might just get in the way again, just like my last video. But, you know, for science. There we go. So, got the switch out and uh, so there's very little um, so there's no electrical connection in, in the switch in the in the switch itself. So the way um, so when it goes on the circuit, this little red piece kind of sit in between the two the two components here, like this. All right. 
Okay, so I'm gonna put this all back. Hey, <laughs> I'm back. So I figure I want to make sure that uh, I can show you the procedure to uh, put it back in, and uh, that still <laughs> still works. Uh, so you kind of have. So I push this plate back in, and. Um, and again, uh, as it comes out, I encounter resistance. As it comes out, I encounter the same amount of resistance as it go back in. But uh, you just kind of have to use a little force to uh, push it back through. Now, in, what's important now is to uh, make sure that the plate sit very flush against all the screw post that um, was originally there. Uh, wiggle it a little bit, make sure everything um, is not caught and uh, make sure your switch on the left hand side still flips properly and uh, now I just have to uh, put all the 15 screws back in now remember you don't want to over tighten these because you never know um, if they strip, then uh, it might compromise its integrity. So let's uh, screw this back in. You want to make sure the screw is uh, tight enough so that they um, so that the screw, the plate, sit flush against the board. But not so tight that you will uh, strip the threads that's uh, underneath. So whoever getting the uh, next the optical switch keyboard, just keep in mind that you don't have to open up. Uh, you don't have to unscrew any of this. Uh, you just need to uh, get one of those um, official switch extraction tools and uh, clamp it down like this and it will come right out uh, there should be no resistance because this switch is not mounted on the PCB it's not attached to the PCB in any sort of manner and uh, the the interface uh, actually has a very uh, large gap. Uh, there's no friction. It's unlike the electrical switch where, switches, where uh, the socket actually has a um, has a metal clip that uh, grips onto the um, electrical contact on the switches. So uh, this type of switch will be very easily replaceable because. And again, uh, this is just a physical component. There's no electrical components in the switches itself. Okay, now uh, I will just have to take my time to uh, put all the switches, I mean keycaps, back on. Yep, is it back up again? Alright, so as a bonus, I'm going to uh, take apart one of these uh, key switches. Um, so once you figure out how to do it, uh, even without a tool, uh, it could be much easier. You just uh, kind of pry from the top, pry from the bottom. Now just make sure you don't do it too many times because... Um, yeah, yeah, this is the second time I take this switch out and 
it's already exhibiting some kind of uh, damage to the tab, so don't do it. Uh, make sure you get, if you want to take it out, then make sure you get the proper tools. Uh, but yeah, I just uh, like to do this uh, sacrifice my keys uh, for the video. <laughs> so anyway, so let's uh, open this up and uh, see how it looks like inside. Um, to open this, just um, flip open this um, plastic tab over the uh, black housing part. Now you need to do it on both sides so that it comes off evenly. And uh, there you go. Um, here's this. This is the stem. This is the um, spring. There's no uh, mechanical. Um, what am I talking about? There's no electrical components inside. There's no metal tabs uh, getting uh, pushed across and uh, coming into contact with each other. There's no pin on the bottom. There's no electrical pin on the bottom. Oh. This uh, spring just doesn't like to stay in one place, so yeah, be very careful about these springs because uh, once you lose it in your house, then uh, you're done. You're gonna get the neck and a new switch. All right, so um, to put this back together, just uh, do this in reverse, and uh, and you just push it right back into the this hole right here. It will just snaps together. Uh, like I said, the um, the hole that accepts that um, allows your stem to interrupt the beam. It's actually pretty big, so uh, there should be no resistance at all. Actually, uh, let me show you. So let's uh, put this back together. Uh, I don't have any plans to uh, loop this thing. Uh, this window, this window here accommodates this lens here to um, let the LED on the bottom shine through. Okay, snaps together. And again, uh, the, I'm not gonna do take this switch out again. The the tab is uh, <laughs> already kind of going out. So let's put this back in. Very easy. No resistance at all. Well, uh, except for the snap into uh, the plate. All right. So hope you enjoy this. Put this key back on. All right, hope you enjoy this. Comment, like, share, uh, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next one. So you lift them off and overcome this tab right here. Oops. All right. Don't. my spring wonderful So everything works, nothing goes wrong, and we're all set.